welcome to another edition of the Calgary Sessions. I'm your host, Jeff Humphreys. This is episode number 17. Uh, today's guest will be a cool conversation. Um, he and I recently just got introduced through a good friend of ours, uh, Ryan Turbide. Ryan Turbide has also been invited on the show 15 times, and now what he's doing is just giving up his friends instead of him. So, <laughs> Turbide, this one's for you. Um, so I'll let this guest uh, introduce himself, uh, name, and what he's up to right now. Excellent. My name is uh, Tony Milerese. I am uh, the owner of Pizza Face and soon to be Italian restaurant DOP. Awesome. Um, so, like I said, Turbide, uh, our friend, mutual friend um, Ryan, hooked us up. So, uh, the, the interesting thing about the show is as it gets you know, a little deeper in the city, I'm going to come across characters like you that we don't know anything about each other. We know that's we, the best part, I think. Yeah, it's right? cool. We see social, right? I, yeah. I've obviously, I've been picking up on your brand, Pizza Face specifically, for a little while now, watching what, you know, at the community, uh, community health? I don't know community natural foods. Yeah. So I've been watching you do it in there and obviously the tail gun, tail gunner connection. So this yeah. will be a fun, a fun conversation to really get into your roots. Cause I know nothing about you. So, um, you've seen a couple of these episodes. What I'd like to do is just let the guests go back as far as they want to go. I'd love to know kind of how you grew up, where you grew up, you know, what your interests were yeah. and then uh, we'll get going into how you ended up in the, I mean, I can tend to ramble, so if I can keep this Dude, concise. There's no uh, there's no time limit. If all of a sudden, if this thing's like really starts blinking, yeah. you'd run out of real estate. Well, I guess we would start it off then. I mean, I guess, like you said, we don't know each other that well. So I, I kind of did some Google researching too. But some interesting things came up on you and, yep. and what, you're, what you've done and where you're going. Yep. So I guess the question is like, what got you to here? Like why Dude, this? Well, this is, you know. That that is like a podcast by itself. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, yeah. The reason the reason I got here was um, when I started up my own digital um, shop. I knew I needed to kind of build my brand and let people into my world. And this is a way to do it in a non sales way. That my name just kind of goes out there in Calgary. I want I want to be you know I want to have a presence in Calgary. It's my home base. It's born and raised here. So the reason I brought the reason I did the show was to surround myself with individuals, like-minded individuals that are doing their own thing that are either artists or athletes. And those are the three people I like to do. So the reason I did this show is just obviously social media is a big content play. This show allows me to create a bunch of content. And it also, you know, it just, it, like I said, it introduces me to interesting characters. Now they know you, you're a great guy to know in the city. You know, you, you got a lot going on, you're moving, you've got things. So I like being around those people. So yeah, I think it's interesting that you get to like from listening to a few and and for my for the viewer to get to know maybe names that they recognize and mm -hmm. not necessarily the story and the personality mm -hmm. and and so I mean I mean I hope you enjoy this. As oh, yeah. this, <laughs> I this hope is it awesome. keeps going. And the, the 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 interesting thing that a lot of people don't know is that I'm an introvert by trade, and um, even when when we met at the uh, the first street market, you know those those situations I don't enjoy. Yeah, they're big. They're there's a lot of people in a, in a, in a space, whatever size, but I'd rather one-on-one. -on -one. You get me in front of somebody one-on-one, -on -one, I'm super comfortable. But then the introvert, the introvert side of me in a big group, I just... It, well, it works. I mean, as an extrovert, I'm the opposite where I think sometimes I, I get a little nervous doing this. Yep. But then if the, per, the person interviewing is, or, you know, calm as yourself, then yeah. you get a little bit into it, you start warming yourself up. Yeah, totally. It's, yeah. And that's, and that's part of my shtick yeah. too, right? I, I, I enjoy just talking to people and I, I think I can just kind of keep it chill. So yeah, everyone has a story. Yeah. That's, that's the totally. thing. I think, I mean, all different avenues, it's like DJs, entrepreneurs, yep. restaurant owners. It's like, you know, I, I think you see a, a resemblance in yourself and, and these people's trajectory of like passion. Okay. So we take passion and then, yep. and you're like, okay, their passion happens to be this and mine happens to be people, but yep. passion is going to get you to where you want to be. I agree. Cause like opening a restaurant now, it's like... <laughs> That's all it is. Oh, man. It's a this, bad idea at the best like, of times. <laughs> having the phone off for this interview has got to be the best part of my week. Because <laughs> I know there'll be 17 emails. And because I work a certain speed doesn't mean that yep. like City of Calgary works at yep. that speed. Contractors. Other <laughs> licensee people. Or, totally. So, yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, this is great. Great it's to be here. Cool, I guess man. we could start from the beginning. Yeah, I want. I, yeah, take me back, man. I want to yeah. be like born, raised. It's like cool. Which, it's cool to watch people that are born in Calgary here. And yeah. I was born here. I was born in '83 at the Calgary General. Yep. Um, but I'm sure there was a little like uh, what do you call that? Economic downturn at that time that was, too. That so was, my interest rates were like 19. Yeah. percent yeah, yeah. So yeah. my parents lived in Montgomery, and then 
my mom's family was from Windsor, Ontario. So they were like, let's move back to Ontario. Mm. So raised in Windsor, Ontario, yep. where my parents, my dad was like a career restaurant server and my mom was in the banking world. And my dad um, took a chance maybe late later in like in life and his Oh, well, not later. I would say for after serving for forty something years, he Crazy. decided to open a restaurant. Then no way. So they had that for about fourteen years, and I worked there. What kind of restaurant was it? Italian, <laughs> I like like classic, like I mean real deal. Yeah, like grandma's I mean, recipes, like all of it. Yeah, if I spare like a fraction of this interview to talk about that, is because I think it shapes the way in which I do things now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's. If you work in this industry long enough, you see that there's like a corporate structure and then there's profit gains and profit losses and things. Mm -hmm. And I just don't ever think that for better or for worse ever existed in that my parents' restaurant. Yep. So, so they were just food, atmosphere, service. Yes. Yeah. I fresh. Mean, like just profit was way low on that. Mm -hmm. and, and that wasn't always a good thing. Yep. But, but it put in perspective when my dad got sick with cancer, what... Uh, he meant to people mm -hmm. and what that his service providing that meant to so many like families and yep. along those 14 years watching his staff members go from like you know high school graduates to doctors to yep. you know and watching the kids grow up as and people who had their first date there have their 10th anniversary and mm -hmm. I mean how often is that forgotten when we mm -hmm. are looking at opening a restaurant yep, you know for it's, sure. I mean it's so like making money is so crucial to keeping you alive mm -hmm. but if your life's taken short yeah you, what do you remember right still legacy so that, that kind of gets us kind of where to the idea of opening a restaurant so now. Did, did you work at the family restaurant for i did i, I mean everything like the cliche, I, was my, I have this like yeah i have this I, like cliche italian tv show and watching yeah. this like little tony running there around was, there was like time so i think the, the 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 most informative years i had in this industry was at 14 when my dad was was didn't have a restaurant yet but he was uh like a serving serving yep at and, an italian joint yeah always italian restaurants uh so i was like his boss boy watching him work the room and then showing me like what to do i think my first job was changing ashtrays so like awesome. put the clean one in pull out the dirty one give the clean back and my awesome. dad you know um my dad said this is how they tip you so being a border town we had a, like a lot of american guests and mm -hmm. there's a very important guy sitting there and every time he <laughs> ashed i changed it I no changed. finally he gave me a 20 dollar bill he's like do not touch my ashtray thank you let it go and so <laughs> yeah so those are like so i kind of i haven't i have an affinity for ashtrays now i know they're not as useful anymore but i've started a collection of them and i incorporate them into wherever i can have you seen those old like the really old cool like glass blown ones they're yeah, like yeah oranges and yellows and they yeah, kind of look like huge like drag like this yeah. dragon flowers yeah, yeah. I and mean, when you go to like antique shops it's mm -hmm. like they know so i collect like old ones from best western or like oh, you cool. know like what it could be strip clubs or whatever mm -hmm. like the and and they're so nostalgic because you would say you would probably see them growing up all the time right mm -hmm. you saw ashtrays mm -hmm. like everywhere everywhere now what are you seeing ashtrays so mm -hmm. We're like looking at things for the new Italian restaurants. It's like, I want the bill to be served on an ashtray. Awesome. So I think it incorporates something that clicked from way long ago. Cool. My first experience in this industry, which is then now taking this journey that is remarkable and amazing and have met so many people. Yep. And it's like anything in life, there's points where you start to question where you are and what you're mm -hmm. doing. I probably could, I've told my younger self to enjoy a little bit more of that and not. Yep. I just like not, head down. And not push so much on like, mm -hmm. I mean, what's happening next, where you are. Yeah. But all those years of like serving and busing and dishwashing, mm -hmm. they all click when you own a restaurant. You know, I have, I have a lot of help. Like I have my partner, she's amazing. Like my life partner and she has helped with design mm -hmm. and she can see the clear of it all. And I look at that and I have to look at all those things even around here and say, how does it work when we open the door? Mm -hmm. Like for me, that's the only, that's the part that I am good at is like once a door opens and customers are in yeah. here and they're clicking and we're yeah. chatting and we're yeah. telling stories, either people I've just met that day that might be lifelong friends mm -hmm. or people who are lifelong friends who are coming to visit. Mm -hmm. Did you pick all that up when you were, you know, when you start busing? So where, where did it go? Do you start busing and then yeah. you're like waitering with your pops? Or yeah, you I mean, like, 
let's be honest. I think most people start in this industry, they bust, they mm -hmm. get a tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this tip now Cash. is indicative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would say from 14 to 18 was yeah. when I made the most money in my life because mm -hmm. I hadn't been int introduced to bars or alcohol mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm still living at home, saving a bunch of money. <laughs> saving a bunch of money, like as cash as a 14 year old, yeah. you know, yeah. you like, you have all the things you want to buy, mm -hmm. especially in, in like life. Sometimes you're not, your family's not in the best financial situations yep. or mm -hmm. you're, you're in the neighborhoods that are in the best fun yep. situations. So to just, to kind of always not have to worry about, totally. you know, buy my own shoes or yeah, yeah. my own Nikes if I want my yeah. own Sports Doc cards, Martens. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign up for Columbia House. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still get some That DVDs was a good one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so so what happened? So you worked at that restaurant until like 18 out in... Yeah, I, I think it would have changed. My dad had did, got into a partnership at another restaurant when I was 18, mm -hmm. which didn't end up working out for him. But yep. that, that I think when I turned 18, then, then it's like wine knowledge, wine service, serving connecting to people then you know obviously making more money yeah as a bus where you make less tips and servers you make more yeah starting to see that like then going like at that time i was in political science university i was gonna ask you about your school like how yeah. does school fit into the restaurant world oh. i mean like it was great to be part of it i think anybody when you go to university from high school you open your eyes to a lot of things mm -hmm. especially if you're the social studies yeah. <laughs> sorts, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. you open your eyes to your, well, your first philosophy class or mm -hmm. your first political science class. I mean, your eyes are open to it, but you st I'm still drawn to the, the allure of like the restaurants. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can look at it and say like, there's a whole like very negative side, toxic side at mm -hmm. times to it. But there is an allure to this, what we do, you know? And so, yeah, I, I loved being in class for, for, as much as you can love that, mm -hmm. but my, I think I'd always I just wanted to be back at. Did work. your family want you to get a degree of some sort, like go to university? I think so. I think I don't think I don't think if you, I'm not. I'm choosing not to have children. Yep. But if I have one, I don't know if it just naturally you don't push them into what you do. Yeah. Because I because you can yeah. see how hard it's been. Yeah. And, and in my journey, I can see where the struggles lie, and mm -hmm. you don't want your children to struggle, even mm -hmm. though struggle makes you better yeah. <laughs> to yeah. some extent and so it's really interesting you say that i think um you know the, especially the restaurant world when you're when your dad's committed as a like a server for that you know a professional yeah. server for that long is rare in itself yeah and you know just at, when we're so young we just pick up all these things especially when mm -hmm. you're working with them like it's almost impossible for you not to go that way it is you would I have know. to you would have to make a like yeah I'm i gonna, like just drive to work with him and and i mean if he was having a bad day and we didn't like talk much in the car or there's things going on at home and it gets to work and opens that door he becomes like this most charming human being mm -hmm. and i mean it's called like that like johnny carson effect they call it where you like the this the, the curtains open and then yeah. you're on show i don't know realizing now in life if that's like the most balanced way to live like i, I mean sometimes coaster. it was tough to be like wow my my dad was an asshole before yeah. he arrived. Yeah. Now everyone now wants to be his friend. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, I mean, that's a whole other topic, but I'm yeah. learning that like, I got to carry on my persona. The person I am at work is who I am. Perfect. And like, I think any role that you take, if you're the person that other people are looking up to, you, the whole energy of the restaurant and yeah. my, my situation will be based on how I walk into work. Yeah. Are you okay to be the, you know, when you open up DLP, are you, are you good to be, I'm good. I, I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it. Yeah. You're good to be the face, the voice, open to close, yeah. like build this thing. Yeah. I hope that if anyone's listening, laugh at that point when you ask that question, <laughs> who knows me? <laughs> like, they, hey, Tony, do you like to be the center of the tension? <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it's a huge time commitment. I've been, I've been in the restaurant world for a long time watching mm -hmm. opens and stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I get what you're about yeah. to do. Obviously I've never done it. So it's like, yeah. this is armchair quarterback stuff, but it's No, good. no, for sure. It's and like, I, 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 I've been like, this is fully like to take this on as like not being a small part of an opening, being the part, I mean, mm -hmm. with a conjunction with the chef and all the wonderful people that are helping. Yep. But it, it, the final decision lies on me for everything. Yep. And so I've watched like, you know, friends or my dad go through the process and you're like, what do you learn? And I'm like, there's some things that haven't changed for 30 years. This, we're, you know, we've, <laughs> my dad complained about the LCBO, like we complain about the AGL, it never changed. Or my dad complained about the city of Windsor, like I complain about the city of Calgary. And so, so funny. What do you do? I mean, like if some things and just don't change, you have to work with them. Yep. You know, like they say, like I can't change the outcome. I can change how how I, you know, 
mm-hmm. how I perceive it or how I handle it, yep. right? And yep. so, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting to catch me because I'm going through all this opening oh, yeah, stuff totally. now. But I'm trying to look at it and be, okay, nothing's going to change in that regard. Mm-hmm. I still need to remain happy. Yep. I still need to be functioning you know, son and mm-hmm. boyfriend and coworker mm-hmm. and boss. And mm-hmm. so like, I'm really learning to absorb a lot, yep. take it in and then still kind of smile on the way out, right? And not affect it. Cause it's, it's happened to everybody who's done this yep. before and we will get open. It's just part yep. of it. Like spent, uh, I like to 1am last night in the spot, just kind of like sitting there working and trying to feel it mm. and it's starting to feel real. Cool. That's, that's because everything else is like, before you open, it's numbers, it's deadlines, it's, yep. you know, it's your checklist, right? Totally. And so you have to eventually get from paper to magic, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, you have to eventually put the sheets away and you have to actually just do it. Yep. And, and, and projections are scary because I don't like anything that projects what I'm going to do for the next year because a restaurant isn't a projection of the year ahead. It's every minute that you're in there. It's like, a, it, it's the only time you're in your body is when you're working. Yep. And I'm very lucky because I could look at times in my career where I've worked on a slow Monday or a busy Friday and I can stop and say, hey, my dad was in these positions. But you know what the difference was at certain times is like he had to support two kids, mm-hmm. you know, in mm-hmm. a family. I mean, my, my mom worked too, but there was a support of a yeah. family there. And I'm yeah. like, well, how much different that is compared to like just you game. It's like in my, in my world, it's like a game, mm-hmm. you know, I'm supporting myself. Which, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. So it's a different ball game. Yeah. That's so right. I think of him and I'm like, oh, I got it easy. It, it, Let's just it. do this. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's just do this. And like, there's like a whole other element to this industry is like, I am a better uh, employee all around if I maintain good mental health yeah. and maintaining good mental health may be opting for water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So, so back me up to, um, yeah, sorry, we don't know. No, 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 don't, this is my job. Okay. Not, you, I just kind of bounce you around. <laughs> okay. So back me up to, um, kind of graduating university, figuring out that, you know, what, where your head was at, oh, how you're making is, your decisions. Yeah, so, you know, um, it was a very good, it's a very giant Italian community in Windsor, Ontario. And we have, uh, Erie street, which is like 20 something restaurants lined up. I, you know, I don't even, I don't see it much in Western Canada, but. It's kind of like a Toronto, Windsor. Yeah, like Little Italy. Yeah, Little Little Italy. Italy. And so working there, friends worked at other places. It was like very, like each restaurant had (laughs) 20 restaurants with the same menu. How about that, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's traditional Mm -hmm. Italian, Mm -hmm. different atmosphere. And everyone worked kind of and chatted. And it was a really good environment. But my dad, when he came to Canada from Italy to Calgary, he worked. Whereabouts in Italy? uh, Calabria, Southern Italy. Okay. Little um, village called San Giovanni in Fiori. My parents come from the same village. They were like neighbors, but my mom was 18 months when she moved and my dad was like in his young 20s. Mm. So my my dad had an accent. My mom kind of straight Canadian almost in that sense. Mm. So, cool. Yeah, yeah, it is cool. Yeah. Um, and so there was a, a kind of level you hit. You served, you know, every restaurant had the same wine list and every restaurant had these like 20 Italian wines and they're mm-hmm. still around today and they're still great wines. And so thinking of when my dad talked the, the most highly, mo- the, the things he talked highly about was his time in Calgary and his time with the Fairmont, you know, a PC, ho- CP hotels it was at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of saw this application for Jasper, Fairmont Jasper. When you were living out there? When I was living here. So, and, no, I was living in Windsor. When, okay. So this is, so this is where we get to the point where university's done and graduated just trying to figure out working still working at, working at a couple of restaurants yeah like, restaurants. restaurants like helping my dad at times i mean i was 20. did he have his own he, he had his own now mm. and i was 22 and he was a meticulous human being and i don't know if we ever we sometimes saw eye to eye <laughs> if that made sense <laughs> i can i i, I learned clear. i didn't I, I could never like i could have never plateaued because my dad's wealth of knowledge was endless mm-hmm. like it just never ended yeah but I just felt like I wasn't, I wanted to learn from someone else yep. and maybe come back one day or who knew, but I wanted to, whatever I was doing was plateauing. And mm-hmm. so I got, I went to work at Jasper Park Lodge. In 22. Lodge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then your mind, if anyone has moved from smaller town, Ontario to like a kind of tourist destination, mm-hmm. everything in like Western Canadian lifestyle in general here in the mountains is completely different. Mm-hmm. Like Windsor is a wonderful city and 
it's just a different landscape. <laughs> if anyone's I've been, been to either, I've, I've been there once. I've yeah, it's a different landscape once. to being in the middle of the mountains. Yeah, you know? totally. Uh, and so your mind opens up to that, but also like I've had the same friend group since I was like six. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same guys, and I love them. So you're opening it up to people from around Canada. Mm -hmm. You have French Canadian friends and friends from Moncton and all different parts, Vancouver. Yep. And your minds open up to that, let alone working at the fine dining restaurant. Now, serving. I'm, yeah, I'm seeing all those things my dad talked about, those like steps of service that weren't really a thing in Ontario, uh, that where we were from. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're big in like high class hotels. Yep. So seeing all of that and then learning wine knowledge that goes beyond that. And so that's when my passion for wine kicked in. Mm. And I was trying French wine because working Italian restaurants, like it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's your 20. <laughs> yeah. They would sometimes cook with French wine. That was their perception <laughs> of it. Right. Like, and so opening your mind to that. And then I got into my, my wine uh, schooling and finished all that eventually. But uh, like small stuff? Yeah. Like the, uh, the W set we, uh, we went through. Over the la over the, from the age of 22, by the time I was 30, I had made it my way through all the steps. And but it was learning from people mm. along the way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, after that, two years in Jasper, which when you work at a town like that, like two years is like 10. Because mm. it's just the world is. You and you could do it. Like I mean, do you live I on site? Do you live in? The you hotel? live like right there. Like there's like staff accommodations yeah. when you move there. Sorry. Um, when you start there, yeah. you live in like a dorm. Oh, so it's like the world, your world gets very small, very quick. <sighs> yeah. And then if you go longer, there's like condos and then there's management housing. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. No good. But it, it, it's a really good setup and I can see how like people, I know people that have started there when they were younger and then later on disenchanted with everything yeah. in this industry and moved back and you got that, you just, you can, it's really hard to have a bad day in the mountains mm -hmm. if, if this is what you want, yeah. you know, if you want like the closest Walmart was 200 kilometers away. So in Hinton, so like there was things that you needed. Yeah. It wasn't those amenities that you're used to. Yeah. So the opportunity came to work in uh, Fairmont and Vancouver. Okay. Hotel. I mean, I don't have much to say about my time there. It was about a year. It was just like, I feel like in life, it's just if I would have made a left instead of a right yeah. on certain streets, my yeah. life could, I could still be in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I just, I always missed the, when I was there. I was like, I was always a second late or ahead of something. Mm. So the places I worked, they were okay, and yeah. I worked really hard in them. And I learned a lot. It was like a st another life experience, but yeah. it just didn't click. So I had moved. I had went um, back to Windsor to visit family, and my buddy wanted to drive his car back to Vancouver. So we did it, and around Winnipeg. We got into like a little dis argument and I was, once we were driving through Calgary, I was like, I don't want to go back to Vancouver. I'm like, my family's here. So. You had family here? My dad's <clears throat> side of the family. And what made us, why we were born here is because his three brothers were here. Okay. And his three brothers have a bunch of children too, or my cousins. And yep. so we're close. And mm -hmm. so I, I. Like literally you're driving through, you're like. Stop me. I had a bag. I had a, pla I had a garbage bag in my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know my cousin Dan and Sue. Hopefully they listen to this. They just pulled up. I <laughs> no called them like way, man. two hours before. They lived in the Lake Sundance, yeah. and they pulled me up there. That was it. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So then you're just no real solid plan. Obviously, you're just like I'm gonna hang out with family for a while. And no, I mean I hope my mom doesn't listen to this. I, think, I, think <laughs> I she, hope she does. She, I think she thought I had a solid plan. Like this is all thought. No, no plan. I'm like there's a. There's a part that we'll talk to about. What year is this, by the way? Ish. Oh, seven. Okay. I don't want to get ahead of myself. There's like no, that's good. one thing you've asked me when we met, and it wasn't about like this. This is it's just like what Calgary means. So nah, this, we'll get to that one. Yeah, because this is kind of it, this, right? This, well, this, this is, is like, this is it. This like is the landing. beauty of the show, right? Yeah. We're laying a foundation that's going to yeah. get us to that end point, yeah. and it's all just going to go Yeah, because it, it kind of just go like it, it's a, it, it, and I haven't stopped thinking about it. How about that since you asked? And yeah. So it starts, you know, it kind of goes with this. So you, I get there, my cousins, Dan and Sue, are, they're amazing. And they let me in there and I, I started a little construction job, which wasn't anything. And yeah. then they're, we're there in 07 is like the height of the oil boom here. So things are things rolling. Yeah. And uh, I had a few years in the restaurants in Vancouver that money, you worked hard for little money. Mm. 
And I saw an application for the ranch restaurant in Fish Creek, which is yeah. owned by the Canadian Rocky Mountain Resort Fancy Company. Joint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I go and apply, and I, uh, ironically, when I get there, the manager at the time, Chris Hart, was a manager at Fairmont uh, Jasper. Okay. And he he sees me. He knows through my application. He's like oh, so happy to see me. And he, you know, he's like, oh, you must be here because you heard I was here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we worked there and that place was doing like, you know, I don't know how many weddings a year, 100 and something weddings mm -hmm. and corporate events with oil and gas. And it was big mm -hmm. during Stampede and um, giant wine lists. So I just dived back in. Yep. And um, from from there, I went to work at like what changed my life was Cilantro on 17th Avenue. Well, you worked there. Yeah. Did you work with Chris McKinnon? Yeah. So Chris Mackey and I owned Tavernetta together okay. at one point. Yeah. So gotcha. good friends. That's who your hair reminds me of. <laughs> That's why it's easy to talk to you. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> okay. So then you're at Cilantro. Yeah. And so I remember there was a, sh uh, when I went to, they were like, maybe this is a better fit for you than, than the ranch, which was more like function based. It's like you, you can grow here. And so like talking about the history of Calgary, restaurant histories, that place was there for 30 something years. Yep. And I remember going there when I was visiting Calgary all the time, you know, to the upstairs part. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's like very nostalgic. I remember the GM at the time like that, was like, what do you want from this job? And I said, I, just, I mean, I want to be the GM of Cilantro. It was 24, 25 is something I wanted to work for. And yep. it would take five years for that to happen. But yep. I met people there that like, showed you why you do what you do and i think everybody who works at cilantro who worked at cilantro knows that right they they're aware of how important that place is to the, their development and yeah. and it's it's like so many people have gone on to like mm -hmm. other restaurants it was mm -hmm. such a, a such a great place to start why do you think that was like was it just the like the ownership group let people grow or is it the leaders yeah. would let people kind of yeah give them space to grow yeah or, like when i try to look at like my when I try to be a boss and owner, I mean, it's coming from a lot of places like my dad and then my time at CRMR. But if I look at CRMR, they, they, the owners were amazing. They traveled a lot. They knew what great restaurants were. They also hired very well. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, it worked because it's like, if you knew what you were doing, yeah. you kind of, I hate when they say a place runs itself. It's because no place runs itself. Yeah. But yeah. but the manager realizes that these people roll that way. Yeah. You know, like, a, like I think like a like a Phil Jackson in that sense, where you're like, mm. you mm. understand each person's personality, mm. and you know, like you know, like I wouldn't be sitting there and coaching Chris McKinnon how to surf. Yeah. Because he's amazing. Yeah. So you give him that that, that yep. freedom. Yeah. So I guess to answer the question, it'd be like the ownership knew that they hired well, and then just like let it go. Yeah. And then anybody who came into the space, either they made it or they didn't. Either you gelled with the staff mm -hmm. and you stayed or you didn't. So you when you hired there, you kind of just like <laughs> threw them into the pit. And they'd figure it. I had advice from somebody before I start there. Like I said, Rob Whitfield's a gentleman that worked there for like 30 years. And he's a legend in this industry. And, and they were just like, you just put your head down and don't talk to Rob. <laughs> it just show, like, you just work hard and don't talk to anyone, but particularly the older servers. But I mean, like my second day, he came to me and chatted me up. And we've been, I mean, it's a long journey, but we've been really good friends since. Mm. And everybody that I know now has been an introduction, like every good customer yeah. is an introduction from him. Mm. People that have followed me to Tavernetta, now DOP, yeah. originally come from people I've been introduced to. I mean, I, I, when I say that to Rob, it doesn't give me himself much credit for it. And I, I understand that like you can give somebody an introduction what they do with that yeah. is up to you. Yeah. But now I'm looking at it and I'm like, this place is run like my dad's restaurant. There's another, I really like, my personality opened up. I mean, the person that I was in Ontario or Jasper, or Vancouver, I don't know if it was really the real me and this is like the first time I'm like, I'm starting to tell people about my Italian heritage. I'm starting to like, everyone in Windsor's Italian. So mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear about your Italian heritage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, like, there's a row of 20 restaurants. <laughs> yeah. They like, all got the same flag out front. <laughs> you go to my high school, you yell, you just like the hallway, yell Tony. How many it's people that. do you think you're going to turn around? It's <laughs> so, so I mean, so you started, I'm starting to, all these things, I'm, and, and starting to make a life of my own. And uh, my, and, you know, I met my um, 
ex-wife at the time, Nicole, was an amazing person. And we started to make this life and connect all these things that I like, mm -hmm. dinners that I used to have with my grandmother and stuff, introducing that into our friend group. You know, and, and t taking the little, like, misfits of the restaurant industry and we're like mm -hmm. our own little family, you know. Mm -hmm. And over the years, that group has changed. And that people have come and gone and yeah. added to it. But it's created this core of who I am today. How long are you at Cilantro for? Seven years. So yeah. That, like, that, that place is notorious for, like, service and good food and the atmosphere. Like yeah. It was, always a, it was always a cool spot. It was, I always felt like... I think this, I mean, to go off for one second, we, we said more than before we turn the mic on that this podcast is interesting because everybody has a story. And, and sometimes in the world, we, we think that only the rich or the famous are interesting or like they're important. So like, what does a guy opening an Italian restaurant have to say or, mm -hmm. or a DJ have to say? Mm -hmm. But there's more, I've learned more from these podcasts than like, I mean, like the ones that are that are on the big ones right yeah. so uh and so i always used to compare cilantro in a big scale to certain things because like in my world it was big mm -hmm. it was but it, it reminded me of like saturday night live where different cast members and different mm -hmm. years and and there was some bad years yeah. <laughs> and there were yeah. some weird years but like a yeah and everybody who worked there that that's their favorite year <laughs> and i think lauren michaels always that people ask like People's favorite SNL years are their their teenage years, their late teenagers, right? Mm. So f people's favorite cilantro years are the ones they work there. <laughs> so my favorite were the ones I worked there totally. because I, s I had to inherit this like past of all these servers who who actually the thing about cilantro is when you when you came when you were a former employee and you came in to dine, you acted like you still worked there. <laughs> you you a part you owned a part of it. It owned a part of you, mm -hmm. and, and I, I like that. So I I I braced the past. And, and I told who I was working with that I feel like every restaurant I ever worked at, people always talked about how great it used to be. And now we're going to work together and we're going to talk about how great it is right now. Mm -hmm. And we made every, and, and then Chris and I got to manage together. Yep. We did everything from like circus themed staff parties to, you know, every kind of thing we can do that would be some memories for when the next person comes. Yep. <laughs> Crazy, right? And so the, the SNL, the, the SNL example is really interesting because yeah. you can kind of see that in the, you know, I worked in nightclubs and bars for a decade, so you just, yeah, there's, yeah, it's just, and these, that was a place, and then like nightclub bartenders came for dinner before their night yeah, shift, sure. and I mean, a part of who, like, why I, I feel so Calgary is that, like, trout coming here so much as a kid, I knew all the places, and then mm -hmm. like working with everybody that were like Calgary, Calgary and born, like the little things, like they still consider like COP, Pascal mm -hmm. yeah. or Lindsay Park, yeah, yeah, totally. or like I yeah, knew yeah. those from a kid. Yeah. And so I feel like as like a <laughs> yeah. hybrid <laughs> totally. resident of Calgary <laughs> totally. that I just take it on. Same words, like, yeah. You know, and some people talk to me as well, like, do you remember that place? And I was like, I wasn't here at that time, but they don't know that because I, I, I just like mm -hmm. love to wear it. I'm so proud of being Calgary and I'm so proud of the past and, and of having worked with so many people that are, are born here yeah you know it's it's kind of interesting that's cool pascapu that's classic <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay parks you're like right there so yeah and it, that's that's like the calgary yeah things, like totally uh, the, whatever the original name was that was our you know that's now it. i look at like man <laughs> look at resumes and i was like a small little star for me as if you're a 403 <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> like that's funny right yeah totally like i was just like i'm like can i fight to make my restaurant number a 403 because like man. I just like I just it's, feel like right. It's, yeah, it's like a little bit like it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like a little judgment, not much, but <laughs> it's just classic old Calgary. So after cilantro, where'd you? Uh, uh, again, like all the connection that I made through cilantro at that time were people that worked for CRMR. They had been on 05, the wine shop. Jesse Willis and Jeff Jameson, who both worked at 905. Jeff Jameson from uh, what does he have right now? Uh, I know there's two Jeff Jamesons, but this is one who was uh, Vine Arts Proof at yeah, proof. Donna Mac. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. And so they were working together at, Vi at um, Bin 905, which had a great tight crew of people too. And, um, you know, eventually they decided to do something on their own. They opened Vine Arts. After a few years, they saw that like cock people were purchasing more like bitters and spirits to make mm -hmm. cocktails. So they mm -hmm. wanted to do a, um, a cocktail bar. So we, they approached me to be a part owner of Proof. Okay. Which is like 
an amazing opportunity and it, it was hard decision to make because um you have cilantro which is like comforting yep and family the family comfort, steady can, like, the the kitchen staff and the kitchen in the morning have been there for 25 years you walk in they're happy you mm -hmm. chat you know mm -hmm. their family and you're leaving that to take a big risk to start something new did you know working in the restaurant did you see a a cap ever did you know you wanted to get into ownership eventually yeah it just frightened at me it just like i think i think it was like the perfect time i was no just scared straight mm -hmm. i didn't as as good as my parents were at with the people and stuff like that i, I was always questioning if they were happy because they overworked mm -hmm. they gave themselves to everybody yep. they didn't know like maybe we're learning now that like for every ounce you give you have to take an ounce for yourself yep. i mean in terms of like you know doing something for yourself so i felt like they were givers and then it's just exhausted by the time Sunday came around mm -hmm. or whatever it was, right? Yeah. So I think I was just scared about that. I mean, it wasn't, I also knew that it wasn't a lot of money in it and this and that. And like, you're playing with house money when you're a manager. Kind of, I treat it like it's mine, but mm -hmm. it, you know, if it's a mm -hmm. bad month, I, I can still sleep fine. Yeah. So I think that was like always this fear. I always kept a running list of what I would want in my own restaurant, but I, I just, it didn't come real until like, being part of proof and watching it open and yep. Jeff was very good at like spreadsheeting and seeing what we needed to be successful mm. because as much as you hate as much as I hate that stuff I don't I, yeah I can't <laughs> I can't be me and the guy on the floor unless the things in the back of the house are taken care of totally. right and yep. you know, like how long does a restaurant last these days like two years three years before mm. it closes so mm -hmm. I mean you can have very personable owners, but if they don't, if they can't wear both hats, yep. or they can't at least have someone else to help them with that, that other half, then yep. it doesn't work. Yeah. So I did do the opportunity. I mean, it was to be honest, it was challenging and hard because I was learning to be an owner, like a, a responsible, fiscally responsible owner. Yeah. And and that was the biggest challenge for me. I mean, I had the support in my in my business partners. I had everything, but my mind was just like I left. And cilantro was so close. And even if I was finished work and I'd go there. Oh, you were teasing yourself. I was teasing myself, <laughs> man. I just only, I, I just, I, not looking back at it, I just went to what was comfortable. Yep. You know, and yeah, so. Uncomfortable new owner. Uncomfortable new owner. Back here. And you're like, I want this place to run like it's been here for 20 years, but you got to put the work in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, opportunity after a couple of years of proof, which was like proof just opened and it was like crazy. It was going. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know if it was like exactly, what I thought, of, like, it was clear to me the expectations. I, did, I knew what I was getting into, but then on myself, I don't think I was clear with what I needed. Mm -hmm. And like some, some late nights and, and you're serving, it's, it's a highball town before this. Yeah. People drank vodka soda and they can chug mm -hmm. 10 and still yeah. be okay. Couple you truck, folks, maybe. Truck, <laughs> chug 10 old fashions and tell me how you're feeling. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually people did chug to 10 old fashions and they did tell me how they were feeling. <laughs> and so creating, trying to create a lounge where it's like, you go to the, the other parts of the world, Chicago's and great cocktail bars like in New York and mm -hmm. LA, and they have a set of rules that make the environment better. You know, like try to stay in your seats. You know, this is not a nightclub, mm -hmm. you know, we'll seat your party, full parties when you get here. Things that were like, we were fighting with all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was just it's hard on my heart because I'm a yes, I'm a yes man, I'm a pleaser. And mm -hmm. so it, it, it's now definitely hit its groove after five years or six years, whatever proof's been opened. Yep. But I know those people that opened it, they set the, they set the, the mark for the rest of yep. the way it is. Now people know. This but is, if people the wanted way. to come in, like, I just want to stand at the bar. No standing. Mm -hmm. I just want to sit where the rest of your party. Uh, they're not here. You can't sit. Like, there's a bunch of no's, you know? And they're like, <laughs> how do you, like, what is this place? Yeah. I We're would, in Calgary. Like, I would, like, go there, and our list would be four pages long, and yeah. I'd go for brunch on Sunday after my Saturday shift. And it was, like, people snarling at me at other tables. They remember from the night before, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I could, like, <laughs> I'll buy you a mimosa or whatever you want. Like, yeah. Funny. Yeah. So uh, opportunity came in on Edmonton Trail to oh, that was a house. It used to be a Japanese restaurant, and that was to become Tabernetta. And before the Japanese restaurant, it used to be an electronics store. Yeah. My dad used to buy our okay. TVs and stereos there. So when we took down the uh, shed in the back, there were so many old old, t old TVs and yeah, stuff dude. like that. Yeah. I forget what it was called. Yeah. And I can't. I can't remember. But yeah. That's that's how I know the place. And I know like and then I met it like a, another guy wanted it. A, it was Chris and I and a third person. And that third person wanted to open it. And I was still at proof. And I just thought of Chris, like he wanted to get out of serving and managing. And so I just thought of him. And I mean, he's just 
is one of the best at what he does. He, he is an amazing person. Yeah. And here's the, here's a weird one for you. He was my very first guest on the Calgary sessions. All right. On. So version 1.0. Yeah. It was, um, uh, we shot it. We probably shot it in January and then the pandemic started in March. Yeah. And between, I think we might, might, might've been December. We shot it anyways. We shot it. He was the very first guy that sat in your seat. And I went to high school with Chris and we talked about Tabernetta and we talked about his life and it was a really yeah. cool episode and, you know, and unfortunately I, I took it a different way. It took the show a different way. My branding wasn't done. So I yeah. was like, there wasn't enough meat on the bone for me to take the show that way. Yeah. So I had to put it. And then unfortunately I couldn't get him back on the show. So anyways, yeah, yeah. that's so now, yeah, get into yeah. Tabernetta. No, for sure. And I mean, this was like in theory, really great to have Chris and I, I was going to stay at proof and then Chris was going to run it and I got to open it there was some really great things like he has like my family helped build the bocce court and his family was painting the trim and his parents who are the most amazing people were so involved it takes a village right yep. you know but it, it, it partnerships are hard and I, I mean two's hard three's a crowd mm. <laughs> and then then I, I decided that like Tabernetta was everything I always wanted to do and so yep. I was like I left proof and I started at Tavernetta and it's um it, it was a busy place. It was a special little joint. Yeah, and it just it's just part of like it's just part of this industry. It's like you can be busy mm -hmm. and the guy watching the finances can tell you it's not and mm -hmm. so you you know you don't you don't know what to do. Yep. It's just I mean it's it's happened a thousand times. Yep. So it's unfortunate what I kind of left uh Tavernetta before the pandemic like a, what, a year. Like my my dad got sick at this time so mm -hmm. I mean so we're looking at opening Tavernetta and then my dad gets like pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I go to work at Tavernetta, then leave halfway through and the people at Tavernetta, Chris included, were so amazing with that. I mean, Chris knew my dad. Chris was in my wedding party. So it was, he was very aware of what my dad meant to me. Yeah. So here we go. Now I get to go back home and I'm watching my parents' restaurant while my dad's in the hospital, like getting surgery and recovering, which took forever. So, I mean, the romantic part of this is that now I get to see what he's done for people. So, okay, my mom and dad have to be away. My brother comes down with his daughter too. Like the whole family are supporting each other. And so I would try to run this restaurant and it's like a restaurant. That no one gets a menu. <laughs> <laughs> no so the first week and like I, I'm implementing like, like I'm like, I, I know like I know all about wine now and spirits. I'm buying different wines. Oh, you were. I'm in it. Like I, I, I try to pump the Instagram account. I'm like, I'm gonna revive this little. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, wasn't, it didn't need reviving. What was it called? Uh, Divino. Like the Divino, it was called Divino, yeah. But it was called Divino, yeah. Divino no Trattoria. Way. So I mean, then I realizing that like everything's in place for a reason. Like the customers didn't want different. Get out of the way, yeah. <laughs> and so after a couple of weeks, of finally like I'm hearing customers like, "Oh, your dad knows what I like." I'm like, "I, I mean, he's incapacitated. I can't call him for your order." But I, we can see now that like uh, I'm starting to build a rapport after a few weeks. And, mm -hmm. and and then when I had to go back to work, I kind of that week, everybody who came in, these regulars, um, you 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 know them. You're excited. It was like nothing I've ever been part of yet and hopefully try to recreate mm. that it's like this social club and people come in and you don't give them menus and you cook stuff from whatever you have Are you gonna try that i mean like this is the goal over time like this is like so interesting because you you also it was that way because my dad could never not be there mm. and so mm. part of me needs to have a restaurant that i can not have yeah. to be there every day yeah you know yeah. to have a functioning life life outside of it totally so wow. i mean i mean the i meant the menu to be food from my heart yeah. my family's heart and so that it's like whatever you get speaks that so right? it's gonna be good oh yeah i like it i lose sleep over over that but yeah i mean it's gonna be great and cool. we're, we're on track for that good so sorry yeah. um so so how long were you did you then come back like, yeah you so this is i mean this is where like a, another like thing in my life that like gets me to where I'm now as crazy as it is owning the they had they owned the restaurant the building had two apartments on top when my dad was going back and forth from Windsor to London for the hospital they were closing and being open for 15 years that month of closing set them back so far mm. and that's the scary thing about this industry is that if you don't like I can't imagine if he was alive if they had to deal with the pandemic because that 
that has crushed so many restaurants. Dude. But you see, the restaurant only works when it's open. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's a train going straight, and if it stops, it yep. stops for good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, we didn't know what to do. The funds are depleting in the account, and and my brother is like, we should try this GoFundMe that it's been around for a little bit. I mean, we can't tell my dad; he's too too proud to, mm. to do that. My mom's like, it just it's literally like four thousand dollars just to cover traveling expenses. I put a picture of my dad and what he meant to the community. And I think we stopped it at 85,000 or 80,000. I mean, we gave, I think, my, I think my dad required that we give a lot back to Cancer Foundation. It just mm. didn't feel right. Like, yeah. I mean, it's not, I think there was joy in seeing the little messages. Yeah. I mean, there was people from back home. There was mm. the the owners of Canadian Rocky Mountain Resorts. There was like all these things mm-hmm. are just fluttering in, you know, mm-hmm. messages. And then the Windsor Star picked it up. We we're on there. And mm. then we tried. We did these like dinners for him, and like I think it's like to have that experience of like awake before you yeah, pass. And totally. I mean, getting my dad to one of these dinners, we did three because we were supposed to do one dinner to thank everybody, mm-hmm. and there's too, too many. many. Yeah, we had to do three out of four, and he showed up to one, and he just got too too emotional. Yeah. Do you, dude? That's an amazing, wild story. Yeah, and it speaks to that. You know, do you think it's possible to create a restaurant, to create a culture in today's world that would mean that much? Oh, that's a great question. Like, it, and I know, I know in Windsor it's 20. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch of, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like Little Italy. It's changed a little in, bit too, it, but yeah, yeah. But you know, like I've, I lived in Toronto for a year, so yeah. I saw Little Italy and, you know, so Portugal, I understand yeah. it. But, you know, around here, that's not really a thing. Do you think, you know, I, I, I don't know. Do you think that's even possible to have that kind of impact on your community nowadays? That's a really good question. It's I feel like restaurants are a pillar of a community. So if you put a really good restaurant, it can change a community. Yep. You know, I, I mean, I don't know like a lot of examples, but I think of maybe like notable. Yeah. That area. Down like Bon Esther? Yeah. That one, yeah. Is that what's above there? Is that Montgomery? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that was always been a long standing community. Mm-hmm. But I, you look at that restaurant and it kind of it adds to it. It yeah. enhances it. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I think like Tavernetta, if, if it, it was taking a different trajectory, enhances that area. It had the DNA to, get, to do it, right? That restaurant yeah. definitely has it. Yeah. You, you definitely have a different vibe when you're downtown mm. and you have to do your very best. I mean, you have to empower your staff to, to, to be like that. Mm. And you're you're going to always have great staff. You're just not going to have four of you or, yeah. or, or six of you. And yeah. so I've already come across those issues where... I mean, problems where people come for you and, and you want to be like, well, I'm with my family. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. or like, I, 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 mean, I hope that I empower the staff to be like, well, so-and-so will take care of you, mm-hmm. I promise. I mean, totally. people are coming to see you, you yeah. know I mean? Like, it's just like thing, food is, food is the most important part. It's like, fills you, it gives it's you the love. So personal. I mean, you ever have something bad, you just get so angry. Yep. Like, I'm, I'm <laughs> totally. But in a restaurant, it's the minute you walk in the door. Yeah. And I own a restaurant and I've been part of restaurants. I still am intimidated when I walk into a restaurant. Mm. Why is it? And why is it like in Japanese culture and Japanese restaurant is like a greeting when you get in there? Because you need to be acknowledged. Yeah. The worst thing that ever happens is when you sit there for five minutes. Mm. Like, I mean, I don't care how good the food is. I believe. Mm-hmm. Or my partner at the time will be like, are you going to get through this? <laughs> <laughs> Just tick, 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 tick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like when she's like, when are you going to be human after this? Yeah. The cocktail, yeah, the totally. appetizer, yeah. or the main course. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm internalizing. I'm trying to come. because I mean, like that, that thing is like you're scared. Like it's intimidating. It's busy. There's yeah. people running around. But like mm-hmm. the bartender says hello, and the server, and then the manager. If one someone says, "We'll be right with you." Yeah, they know. They know when they're in a busy restaurant. They see how busy you are. They see their tables not ready. They see the person. If it's a small restaurant, they can see that. Yeah. That's why I like where we're moving into DOP. It's a small place. Cool. The former Vonderfell space, you can see all the tables. And so if if you walk into that space and it's busy and no one's saying anything to you, you're mm-hmm. probably angry that your table's not ready. Mm-hmm. You're angry that it's loud. Or, but if you welcome people to that, like also that that thing of that clickiness where sometimes friends of, of the owner are in and, and they're being treated yeah. while no one mm-hmm. else is. And yeah, yeah, I've seen those I places. I hate that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know exactly every, what's happening. You, yeah, pull in. If, if you're pouring <clears> something for your friend there and mm-hmm. the people can see you pour the people like it's totally. got to be inclusive yep. it's, a, it's an inclusive environment it's the only way i can operate so hopefully by leading by example you can create those but yep. i mean i think i think you make a good point and i i think the answer is no i don't given 
proximity or geography yep. in the restaurant. I yep. don't know if you can do that downtown. Yeah, right? yeah, that makes sense. I go to places that are like that. I go to a Zuri pizzeria that is the, the mom and, and her mm. two sons. And I'm like, I mm-hmm. take, if I take people from restaurant people from like out of town or London or other big cities yep. or our famous like wine people or cocktail people. I go there because they've seen everything else. They've mm. seen a steakhouse or yep. a trendy restaurant or a wine bar. Totally. But Pizza what drink. what they what their heart wants. Yeah. What every industry person's heart wants totally. is, is to have be seated by like the, the mom of the owner. Mm-hmm. Agreed. <laughs> so so now you so you're I want to get you back to Calgary. Yep. So you're in Windsor and then how do you get back here? Uh it just comes to the point where, you know, my my dad's back and he's not a hundred percent healthy, but it's I, you know, at this point I'm married. My wife is holding for it at home. <laughs> Paychecks are not coming in in Calgary. Yep. You know, you generally in this industry, you, you work when you, you get paid when you work. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm just, you know, it's, it's a situation where you have to go. It's yep. your dad, right? So finally come back and, and, and slide our way back into Tabernetta. And just to do a favor long term for Chris is like, if I, I'm here, I'm a big presence personality you're the boss and owner we're both the owners but you're the boss yeah but i feel like staff don't know where to go yep and so i was like i need to i need to so i just went to bartend i went to bartend in the living room hmm. i mean money and yeah and and uh and it's like a really good decision for like hierarchy of like mm-hmm. and i mean you can like if you can fuse staff that way it's yep. just not fair to chris and yep. myself or the staff included so it was a, it was a pretty easy decision and it was like Okay, it worked. Yeah, you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, did that for a while. And like, pizza face is this most interesting thing. Well, this is it. This yeah. is, you know, I, I have, yeah. I've, I've seen it. I just have no idea how, why, like. There's a cool documentary right now. It's called The Smallest Pizza Town You Never Heard Of. And it's about Windsor Pizza. So, growing up, at like Windsor Pizza is a thing. It's like a, it's a particular type of pizza. It's like, it's not thin, it's not thick. It's the thinness of pizza face it's the inspiration in a sense hmm. but it was this idea that the pizza sucks <laughs> in calgary you know yeah. not, not i mean has it changed quite a bit there's so much good pizza now yeah but i think what what our base pizza in ontario for the most part is so different than like pizza 73 mm-hmm. you know in pizza 73 if that's your base it sets the tone for all this mm-hmm. thick style pizza which now i'm learning to love as its own genre yeah but not as the baseline mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so like yeah, yeah. it's an so option I was like this just wasn't a baseline place now now we have noble pie which is like mind bending and, and like azuri for italian style but pizza face can and actually pretty good and like a lot of carmines there's so many like now that have we can all say we're in the same realm of mm-hmm. thickness yep and so my friend mike garth and i mike who works for village okay we we just talked about pizza i had this like wood burning portable oven it was like 500 pounds so you're always into pizza like you're just always kind of... always like okay. I mean, but it just wasn't a thing it just wasn't i mean people would order pizza at parties here in calgary yep. and i was just like this isn't pizza and i mean not offense to those no, no. pizza places but i'm like I don't feel like one slice is like fills you up. Yeah. It does more than fill you up. Yeah. There's a lot of bad things to you. Totally, but, totally. <laughs> but I'm like, there's could there's could be a, like most things. There could be a better way. And and when you start this journey, everyone tells you you can't do it in Calgary because the water's hard, the altitude, blah blah blah. And I'm like, we're only. I mean, I've learned a lot of. I've had to do things a lot the hard way learning this. But I'm a. I'm a doer, meaning I'll just do it and find out if it works or not. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can calculate it and t- until I'm blue in the face, but I don't know if it's going to work unless I do it. So this is where Vince and Ryan from the diner come in. They they have a wood burning oven inside the diner. On Edmonton. Yeah. Yep. And so we're just messing around there. We're like trying those and like, it's not working. It's like, I planned in a, an event called Pizza Face when we came the up with Mike. Mike came up with the name. Yeah. yeah. The pop up. So we were doing That was the first it. time I picked up on what you're, because yeah. I, I know those guys well. And I'm yeah. Like, we did it at the diner. Right and now. <laughs> as, a, as a setup, it was checkered tablecloths, an accordion player, a guest bartender. It was like my it was like my friends getting together. It was a few months after my dad passed. I want to honor like that feeling. I haven't really been in a restaurant setting for a while. And like I wanted to see if like, what it felt like what it felt like again and as a atmosphere thing it was like just everything i wanted great spot just too just like, i mean it it works so well as a pizza parlor it's just mm. so rad and like it's, it's everyone sees it during the day and then at night with tablecloths it mm. just took on this whole other this whole other body and it was such a good experience and people are laughing and talking to each other and going i mean all things now that 
co- when you think of COVID, you don't. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, a, you know, I don't know if you can do it anymore. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So the pizza, we finally got it to an okay point, and I remember we owe much of Pizza Face success to like people being patient with us. Mm. You know, I think I think they could see that it was going to be something. Mm. Like it like and Mike uh, was in the kitchen who doesn't have a lot of restaurant experience but has a lot of passion. He's a very precise person and and so we were like it was okay. I mean, it was a great environment and the pizza was okay, but I think people walked away with like overall it was awesome. Yep. And then when we were messing around uh, with pizzas, uh, it was it was um, Ryan who suggested the pickle pizza. He did like a version of it with like a bechamel sauce, and then we changed it to a garlic sauce. And and so we always give him credit while he demands. That we <laughs> oh yeah, that's not a <laughs> doesn't demand payment at <laughs> no, least. No, no, just those <laughs> names beside that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I like the joke is like I like to say we got it from Rachel Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So we do in that, and then we do tube there, and I mean like the, the yep. like, uh, pop ups. Uh, if you have anybody else who does pop ups in here, I would like to teach a course on it because they are like they are so challenging. Mm-hmm. And we just had a pop up, a coffee pop up in the DOSP space from Jellyfish, and mm-hmm. they to watch how much machinery has to bring in for three days of mm-hmm. coffee. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it's it's a good way it's to work. start your brand. Yeah. If you I don't know if you know a lot about branding and things yep. like how great is it to. Open a pizza place, but with already having eight thousand Instagram followers. Mm, totally. I would. Those days where like a re, your reputation, your reputation, reputation had to had to help you open. Mm-hmm. Now it's like okay, eight, DOP has eight thousand followers. So when we put it into Community Foods and we say we're open, boom, people. There know. it is. There's no like sitting Audience. around for three weeks yeah, to yeah. see if people are word of mouth. Like this person has to try, mm-hmm. and two mm-hmm. people have to mm-hmm. try, and two more. So it was cool. We brought the oven around. We did it. Uh, we did it. Our ovens at Cannibal, Pin Bar, Tubby Dog, uh, Two Penny. I might be missing a few cool. in, in there. Great we have spots. Yeah, and so we park at the back. Good I mean, people. AHS, Arlo, Truish, AHS was Arlo. not a fan of us mm. at, the, <laughs> at those junctures, but you know. And then, I know I'm bartending while this is going on, and we head closer to what we're doing now. And my we it's March 13th is my birthday. Mm. And the 14th. 14th, closed down. Yeah. On 17th, we were doing takeout inside Vonderfels. My buddy messaged me on the 14th. He's like, we're going to do Vonderfels takeout. Do you guys want to put your oven in the back and do pizza face? Mm. And we went from here to here. Awesome. And I mean, like, what a journey that was working next to the guys at Vonderfels. Yep. Like, the whole world was shut down. I go to, like, the wholesale club, being like, Mm-hmm. Maybe the only time I see restaurant people would be at the wholesale club mm-hmm. buying takeout boxes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but everything, the streets were empty. We're zooming around. We're doing deliveries. Yeah. Like I remember we were just doing everything by hand. And it was just like the minute we said we're going live, we, we sold out within like 10 minutes. And they sold out. And like we're getting that restaurant like vibe. We're getting mm-hmm. to see people pick mm-hmm. up their pizza. And yeah. like, but nobody else in the world's getting it. I know like like everybody's like significant others at the time, like looking at it like – I mean, like so supportive and so great, and mm-hmm. then and then, but also like you guys should appreciate how lucky you are to have that vibe still. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I I I felt like when the guys and I had a beer after the shift, and we felt like, oh, we did, the rest of the world's not getting this. Mm-hmm. You know, we're getting to do this, mm-hmm. and, and it just remained busy. And other people started doing the takeout too. And, and yep. I mean, like, what a time for like restaurants. You know, I sat in a podcast, and, and it was during the middle of COVID, and and it was mostly commentary on how bad things are <laughs> and trying to take this twist with these guys and, and whoever was on is that how about like all the stuff we have done how about this pivot that we've taken just the ingenuity and like yeah. that yeah yeah i mean we can't change like the government's going to do what they do but we have to help ourselves yeah and it's always like if you're a restaurant owner you knew that from the beginning totally <laughs> if you don't help yourself mm-hmm. then you no one no one's good no one's gonna there's no handout no but it's that it's that it's that restaurant tour that that hustle. You know, I don't like using that word. It's kind of like cliche and weird. But just you know, yeah. service people in the Those service two industry words. know how to work. Yeah. Those you know, two words, hustle and entrepreneur. I hate, yeah, they're I they're like I, I don't like to say them. Like it's, <laughs> it's like uncomfortable for me. Yeah. But that you know, a good friend of mine, Guillermo, who used it on the show, he's like, you know, growing up in the in the service industry, you yeah. know how to work. You know how to like find your angle. You know how to if things aren't working, you know how to pivot. Like it's yeah. the, the good ones know how, and yeah. the other ones just like close the doors. Yeah, and so but so, putting the head down and 
providing a service for for people that you know providing them something that they wouldn't get because they can't go out yeah not gloating about the fact that you're busy every day yeah and like and we yeah, gave yeah. we gave back to the uh, bartenders association fund and we gave back to like where we could like, cool. i mean they're they're what we were the joy was in staying busy like the, the profit i would rather have given back and we we were starting to employ people that were not working anywhere else mm. because like it's there's so many wins on this level yeah people are starting to get to try our pizza more often mm -hmm. we're getting we're able to remain consistent yeah we're able to pay ourselves an hourly and my and my partner mike who got laid off at the time and so i i wasn't keen on like a, a profit for the bank because like i wanted to like everything's winning and we're mm -hmm. getting better like mm -hmm. a, you only moving. get good at something by doing it like ten thousand times yeah right so we're getting better and we're working so then when we moved uh last year at this time to community on 10th yep and went open and at the same time that that happened we won top 50 or top 10 pizzas in canada and so i don't know if i'm ever going to open a business where things just meet at the right point mm -hmm. where it's like mm -hmm. <laughs> i hope i don't i mean i'm opening now during a pandemic yeah. but I, I maybe look back at my life and look at all the things that have been great and done. Well, I don't know if anything has clicked like that. Well, I think what's really interesting for you from now hearing the story is from this has been, you've been moving in this direction since you were like 14. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, there's a lot of pieces yeah. on the board for you to get to these aha moments. So yeah. It's not a, and I, I want to take a uh, pizza face to like a front forward facing business, like, like where it has tables and it can yep. sit down. I mean, like I have such a personal staff as guys who've worked at Cilantro with me for many years. They're, mm -hmm. they're so good. It is like right now a large proportion DoorDash drivers and delivery yep. drivers, which we are so kind to, and we, we've built a good rapport with, yep. but I think what now we're, why we're at where DOP is like, I think we're sitting like covered in flour mm -hmm. uh, and working like a 12 hour shift and, Look at my partner and be like, I just miss rest. I miss like mm. restaurants. Yeah, like, I don't mind making pizza. It's fun. Yeah. Pizza is like a like out of community. Yeah, pizza is an amazing thing because you can never make a perfect pizza. Mm. Yeah, every, 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 every like you make eighty up. eighty a day and you stretch <laughs> out eighty dough. You're like they're like a, they're like uh, <laughs> snowflakes. Like totally. everyone's different. Yeah, and it's like. <laughs> It teaches you to be patient because, like, the orders are coming in, the oven can go so fast, mm -hmm. and you can only talk, and you still mm -hmm. have to make it well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a kitchen guy. Like, I can make good food at home, but like, I felt like I got kitchen experience in that sense where it's like, if you don't stop for a second and do it right, that pizza goes out is a customer you're losing, yep. or they're gonna tell two That's people it. it sucks. And so totally. I had to like stop and like learn to like slow it down. I'd rather someone wait five minutes longer mm -hmm. and get a good pizza. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I'm like, I miss people. I miss chatting. I miss yeah. pouring wine. There's like this utility belt you get as a as a restaurant or maitre d or server mm -hmm. or restaurant owners that you have all these great things. You have good food. You throw up people. A good cocktail. Yeah. A good wine. It's, yeah. These all these things to make people happy. Do, do you think you know if you could look into a crystal ball pizza face will have a customer face? Yeah, I mean that's what I was here before I got here this morning was checking out a spot for that. And honestly, this is again because the guys who are working there deserve it. And 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 some for people in particular that like they I know they can I mean staffing's an issue yeah so it's like removing them from one spot to another and replacing them might be hard but mm. no I would know that I can put them in a pizza face that does takeout and has 10 tables mm. and it'd be perfect it'd be cool as good as perfect yeah yeah it'd be like so I mean that's I think that's the golden rule in restaurants is like you work and then you find mm -hmm. you know your your great chef and your great general manager mm -hmm. and you try to give them their own spot mm -hmm. so totally Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, this is cool, man. Uh, yeah, thank I you. I hope we didn't go off. No, no, this is like, it's, it's like, be, it's uh, all perfect. The timing's perfect. This yeah. like, it's just, this is really cool to sit yeah. down with you. Um, I told you the only question I ask people yeah. is, um, you know, when I say Calgary, where's your head go? So I've, you know, you wanted to get into it earlier. I'm glad you didn't. No, so now, I'm here's, glad you cut me off. Here's your chance. I, I mean, like, I hope it makes sense. Why now? Because I mean, like getting dropped off here. Um, so growing up in windsor every summer we went to calgary mm -hmm. and my dad's brothers here like both you know had a lot of children yep. and there's like a big my mom's family is like that too they're big but it's like 
my personality lends like itself more to my dad's side. Mm. And so seeing my cousins all together and like they're loud and like big Italian, like oh, cliche, man, like parties, they're, big, they're like, fighting and okay. yelling like and hugging okay. and loving okay. and then fighting <laughs> and the same. And they're the funniest people I've ever met. Awesome. And they're witty and dumb at the same time. <laughs> and and it's just like, and they're like can rip on each other. And it's and I could go up there as a kid and like from 13 onwards and 14 and 15. When it's 18 and it was 19 to drink in mm -hmm. Ontario and 18 mm -hmm. here. And like hanging out with them and not wanting to leave. Mm. Loving the city. Remember, I remember like driving, like driving into from the airport into the city to my cousin's house. And like that, that, that view and the just like rolling hills. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, ah, oh, it's like it was like I'm getting better to live in the moment. But as a kid, it was like when I saw those, I was happy. And then I was also sad because I knew that once I landed, it was two weeks till I was gone, right? And then I would just cry like a baby in the airplane for four hours leaving. Crazy. And I would pretend a few times I'd pretend to be sick so mm -hmm. I could leave. Stretch it. Yeah, my mom would get really mad. She wants her son back. So I feel like when I now as a, now as when I get at this age, when I wherever we go, wherever you go in the world and you land and you, you take that road, you feel like you're home. Mm -hmm. So I, f I feel like I am like every day a tourist here. And that, like, I'm just lucky to be here. Mm. And I did that this morning. I do it on those sunny days. I really, really love this city for that. And lucky that, like, have living in other cities that I've met people that click to. Because mm -hmm. of Calgary, I'm I'm myself. I'm the person that I am. Mm -hmm. Not not a not a version of me or to like I'm me. And I've and the people around me I've met being me. Yep. And they met them at this time. Yep. And then I get to live in a city that I used to cry when I left. <laughs> so crazy. Now I never have to leave and I'm never going to leave. So awesome. And so what do we do? We can enhance it if we can in, di in different ways mm -hmm. and add to the to this city. But I, d I don't take like don't take it very well when people speak poorly. I mean, I say that I, that's why I don't speak poor about Vancouver. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, I'm probably I could have made a left or I made a right yep. and I'd be there. Been different. But I I mean I, I I I think it was it was meant to be yeah. to be here. This is this is it. Do you um before we go? Do you do you actually like physically think about taking it in a moment, a day, or just seeing something when you're driving around town and you're like, man, that view it's never gonna get old. Do yeah. You, do you like think about it literally, like make a mental effort to to think about yeah. those things, or do you just get caught in a in a moment and be like, wow, like what do you? I'm the airport ride for sure. It's but just like, like the, the driving be, yeah. here, or like driving waking up here. in the morning, like mm -hmm. catching a, a sunrise or catching yeah. the you know the reservoir super flat. Like do you like catch the uh, the downtown view like from Crowchild sometimes yeah. if you're driving that yeah. way or like coming in for Ninth Ave. Yeah, and you're just in. like <sighs> I'm going into that right. Like mm -hmm. I'm going like especially now having a restaurant in there. Like I mean, less cars means that there's obviously it's COVID time. Yeah. I also am trying to absorb this time. When I'm driving to the city, there's not that many cars. Mm, totally. I'm going to try to make my way in, in, in what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, try to like not listen to the noise outside in terms of like the economy and, yep. and maybe potential closures yep. and this. I'm just like going into it. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, a year from now, this city is going to be packed and yeah. I'm not going to have that drive anymore. Totally. I mean, and I know that's not answer your question precisely, but yeah, I mean, I love this city. I used to, I loved, I used to have the, poster of Calgary in my, in my wall as a kid so the cool, when the tower was the biggest <laughs> so thing cool, man. and now I can say that like my restaurant is a spitting like a, a wall a two steps from the Calgary tower mm -hmm. like that I didn't realize until just now <laughs> so wild so I'm just taking it now <laughs> so cool man um thanks for making the time I know you're thank busy, you man dude. you got yeah. a lot going on so I uh you know no thank you for this break I mean this is gonna energize my week yeah it's cool it was uh literally this is turbide introducing us you know Three minutes in the conversation, like he yeah. should be on the show. I'm like, yeah, yeah he should. So, anyways, yeah. uh, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate well, it. Well, maybe get Ryan on the show eventually. Oh, that's a good idea. We should. Yeah. You should ask him for me because <laughs> I'm almost done asking him. <laughs> he won't talk though. We'll just do sub. Do you do subtitles oh, at the yeah, bottom? Yeah, totally. Just <laughs> There's the like hand puppets. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Vince can come and it could be his interpreter. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> okay, awesome. man. We'll uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Thank you. Both.